Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I am going to talk in details about the side effects of Sinopharm vaccine which many of you know as Verocell vaccine. I will also make a comparison of this inactivated vaccine with viral vector vaccine, Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine and mRNA vaccine, Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. And I will also try to answer some of the common questions like when symptoms appear after vaccination, how long they last and many more. So stay tuned until the last. These are the articles I am referring for the study. One is from UAE and the other is from Jordan. Links are in the description. Both men and women were included in the study and people with different comorbidities were included in the study and the age of the participants were between 18 to 80. So you can understand they have covered all kinds of people here. The most common side effect found was pain in the injection site which can be normal or severe, tenderness, redness, fever, headache, fatigue, nausea, diarrhea, cough, allergy, muscle pain, abdominal pain, back pain, lethargy, haziness or lack of clarity in the eyesight, joint pain, swollen ankles and feet, vomiting, bruises on the body, bleeding gums, nosebleed, chills, itchy skin or irritation and allergic reaction, sweating for no reason, cold numbness and tingling in the limbs, dizziness, clogged nose, runny nose, difficulty in breathing, chest pain, irregular heartbeats, abnormal blood pressure, sore or dry throat. These are from UAE study and the other are from the Jordan study. Please note that these side effects referred here are not exclusive only to Sinopharm. These are also found in the other vaccines. So don't get overwhelmed by the number of the side effects. I am trying to give you an idea about all the side effects which are actually in very less number in most of the people. So there is nothing to worry about. These are the all possible side effects. Now I will go in details about the side effects from the UAE study. In this study, they have divided the symptoms according to age below 49 and above 49 and there was no significant difference in the symptoms. That is, all age group experienced similar side effect. And these were the numbers from the first dose. 26% of the age group below 49 had no side effects and 18.6% in the age group above 49 had no side effects in the first dose. In the second dose of the vaccine, the prevalence of side effects were more. Only 15% in the below 49 age group did not have side effect and 10% above 49 age group did not have side effect. That means 85% below 49 had side effects and 90% above 49 had side effects. The most common side effects were pain in the injection site, fatigue, lethargy, headache, tenderness, Fatigue was significantly more in above 49 age group. Now, if we look at the side effects between male and female, we notice that females have more symptoms from the first dose than the males. In the first dose, 17% of the females did not have side effect compared to 45% males. These are the percentage of side effects found in male and female after the first dose. Headache, fatigue and lethargy were more common in females compared to male after the first dose. Male had more pain in the injection site. Women had more side effect after the second dose. 88.4% females had side effects and 80% males developed side effects after the second dose. Severe pain in the injection site and fatigue were the symptoms which were significantly higher in the females compared to the male. Although there was no significant difference in the side effects between younger and older adults, Younger adults tend to show more side effects compared to the older adults and female showed more side effects compared to the male. As you can understand, these are mostly common side effects and I have told you that these are found also in the other vaccines. However, WHO identified two serious side effects which might be linked to the vaccine. They are serious nausea and rare neurological disorder known as acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. 
A blood clot report was also found in the vaccinated group during the trial. However, I do not have much real world data about them till now. Now that I have discussed with you in details about the side effects, let me compare the side effects of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and Pfizer vaccine with Sinopharm vaccine. The data is from the Jordan study, so the values will not be same as the previous table. Blue bar will represent no symptoms, orange will represent mild symptoms, green as moderate symptoms, and pink is severe symptoms. Taller the bar means more of that symptom. 45.7% of the participants did not develop any symptoms when vaccinated with Sinopharm. In case of Pfizer-BioNTech, it was 29.45 and in case of Oxford-AstraZeneca, it was 11.1. 41.3% had mild symptoms with Sinopharm, 44.3% had mild symptoms with Pfizer-BioNTech and 32.2% had mild symptoms with Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine. With Sinopharm vaccine, only 10% had moderate symptoms with Pfizer, it was 20% and with Oxford AstraZeneca, it was 33.5%. 2.5% had severe symptoms with Sinopharm, 6.3% had severe symptoms with Pfizer-BioNTech and 23.2% with Oxford AstraZeneca. So it seems in case of severity, symptoms of Oxford AstraZeneca is highest and Sinopharm is lowest, according to this study. Most of the symptoms due to Sinopharm were mild, so overall Sinopharm seems to have milder side effects compared to the other vaccines. In the clinical trial, efficacy of Sinopharm was found to be 78.1% and the vaccine generates a similar antibody response to beta variant and delta variant seen during natural infection. If you are interested to know more about Sinopharm vaccine, please watch these videos. I will provide the link in the description. Now let's see some basic phenomenon linked with vaccination. First is how soon post vaccine side effects appeared. 12% said 4 hours, 22% said 5 to 8 hours, 30% said 9 to 12 hours, 9% said 13 to 16 hours, 4% said 17 to 20 hours, 9% said 21 to 24 hours and 15% said after one day. So, in most cases, the symptoms appear within 5 to 12 hours. Next question I am going to address is how long did the symptoms last? 30% said less than a day, 56% said 1 to 3 days, 8% 4 to 7 days, 6% more than 7 days. So, in most cases, symptoms last for 48 to 72 hours. How did the participants handle the vaccine side effects? 30% took rest, 66% took painkillers and took rest at home, 3% went to doctor clinic but there was no need for hospitalization and 1% required admission in the hospital. So you can see that the side effects can be controlled at the home with painkillers itself in most cases. In this study, they also saw the frequency of vaccine preferred by participants. 54% preferred Pfizer-BioNTech. 16% Sinopharm, 6% Oxford AstraZeneca, 2% Sputnik V, 1% Johnson & Johnson, 1% Moderna and 20% had no preference. Remember, this percentage will change depending upon the country you are staying. So my question to you is, given a chance to choose between all the vaccines available, which vaccine would you choose for you and your family? Let me know in the comment. That's it for today guys. If you found this video informative, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more updates. Thank you.